Sadids. When picking a league starter, you should always go something heavily tested, proven to work across multiple leagues. This should clear all the content with not that much investment. We don't do that here. You are not a true meme build enjoyer until you start league starting untested memes. What you're getting in this video are three meme builds that have not been tested or practiced. They barely work in a test setting and usually have glaring issues. Footage shown is that of a standard character with no, almost no skill points, usually wearing just a tabula and whatever was in my standard stash and level one gems. If you can't fix your own builds, don't even try these. Also, every build has a fallback plan in case it fails, which it probably will. POBs are below, make sure you opt into the beta for the new skill tree. These are rough POBs. Details are in the POB notes. If an item slot is blank, that means fill it with a random rare that has life and res. I only add items that are mandatory, usually in their poorest quality. I also use the custom mods to emulate new gems and changes. So if POB updates, remove those. And detonate mines is the standardized failure skill for a new gem. All right, let's get right into it. Cast on crit, rage vortex of berserking. I wish I found this idea myself, but it came from a thread on the Path of Exile build subreddit by user Bogboy2. This subreddit is a great place to go if you want to find crazy build ideas. But in the thread, the user found a way to easily make Rage Vortex of Berserking be a cast on crit trigger. All forms of Rage Vortex snapshot exerts on them for their full duration. But there is one exert that is not a war cry that everyone forgot about. Ambush. Ambush is a skill that teleports you towards an enemy and exerts your next attack to have a higher crit chance. But not increased crit chance, base crit chance. 35% increased based crit chance at max quality. With just a little bit of increased crit chance, which you're going to get for being a cast on crit build, you have maxed. Rage Vortex hits really fast and has a long time making it a great cyclone-like trigger. It does restrict you to sword and axes, but that's not the biggest problem. But the first problem is you need to sustain rage somehow. And we do that through the unique belt Chains of Emancipation. This belt is honestly one of my favorite uniques. This belt will set your rage to max if temporal change expires on you, and there is a way to easily make that happen. The ring Rot Blood Promise supports a curse with blasphemy and applies it to yourself. By toggling this cursor aura, it counts as having the curse removed from you, thus giving you max rage immediately. So this is the rotation. First you toggle your temp chains aura on and off to give you max rage. You then ambush an enemy and immediately use rage vortex. You then toggle your cursor aura back on and start running around. Then, anytime your rage goes below 25, or you see that you're self-affected by temp chains again, toggle your aura. And that's it. It's kind of button heavy, but you have a pretty automatic cast on crit setup. You will eventually have to reset it, as Rage Vortex has ramping rage costs. So what do you cast on crit? Whatever you want. In the thread, the poster used Reap, and it worked rather well, having it built in life tap. Personally, I think Ice Nova of Frost Bolts will be pretty cool, with it paired with a cost series to cast the frost bolts for you. Also note during the patch livestream, they showed an axe with an enchant that triggers fire spells on hit, so that could be a way to do it with a rare and not a cost breeze. There is a glaring issue with this build and it is mana costs. The only way around this I found was to either use a skill with a built-in life tap, like Reap, or to play a Pathfinder. Pathfinder's Master Surgeon node, plus a replica Sorrow of the Divine, is effectively infinite in mana as long as you remember to use your life flask. Also, the rage rework might bring some problems. Rage now falls off very fast if you're not gaining it, and it only counts gaining if it's a rage on hit effect. So you need to work in some form of rage on hit. Early fixes to the problem I saw, uh, you could anoint one of the rage nodes to get rage on hit, or you could use the new psychotic axe to get rage on hit. There's probably easier ways that we haven't found yet. Just look for something. You can't start as this build though. It needs two uniques, one from Heist and one from Ritual. The Heist one is cheap, but is locked behind the quest lines. The Ritual one is also a common Ritual reward, but you have to get the maps for that. Till then, your leveling build is Poisonous Concoction. The new uh, Bouncing variant looks pretty cool. That's also your fallback build as well. I had a joke here about Pathfinder being the most common ascendancy, and then I looked it up and it was actually like the 10th. Well, enough of meme cast on crit starters. How about some melee? It's Melee League after all. And that means I get to play Charge Dash again. Charge Dash is actually one of my favorite skills to play, it just didn't do damage. But in this recent patch, its damage effectiveness got doubled, so there's no better time. Charge Dash does take some getting used to. It's a channeled skill that projects a copy of yourself forward. 
You can control moving the copy like you would move normally. Just play with it a while and you'll get used to it. It goes out for a distance, building stacks, and once it reaches the cap, it will stay still and start pulsing damage along the line. When released, you teleport to the end and do a burst of damage. Holding the channel and releasing the channel seems to do about the same damage at the end, so just release when you need to move. This skill can also be played one-handed as well, with, or just with one button. If you bind the skill to a keyboard, you don't even need to hold left click, just move your cursor around. It oddly scales with both attack speed and movement speed, but in opposite directions. Movement speed moves the clone faster but lowers your stack count, while well, attack speed increases your stack rate. So you want to scale both, and this actually makes momentum support really good on this. Another good support, Infused Channeling, just got buffed as well to not have that gem tag requirement. For how I'm setting this up, I'm thinking playing Warden with dual wielding swords and Fizz Convert. Charge Dash is a built in 50% lightning convert. I can get 40 cold convert from the tree, and some Fist of Fire from Herald of Ash. This should proc Trinity as well as enable all of the elemental ailment passives from Warden. I'm also going to work in Rage in the new dual wield retaliation skill, and the new war banner as well, just try everything. This isn't much of a build guide, it's more of a generic melee template. Which is good, because that means I could test every new melee thing all at once. It's also all untested, it could fail critically and there's no fallback. The POB itself is pretty light as well, it's just a rough tree and very very basic gear, just two bad swords and no gear at all. If you absolutely have to fall back to something, pick a dead eye build and just play it as a warden, or just swap warden later. And we're going to finish with something barely viable, in my opinion. It's something I wanted to do last league and didn't get around to, and now it's slightly easier. Rupture Summon Reaper. Rupturing was an out of place ascendancy node on the dead eye that I kept coming back to. The only build that ever used it was a Summon Reaper build, and not even as a dead eye, it was a Pathfinder stealing it. Now that Rupturing is a support gem, every class can do this build. At least in theory, I'm assuming the gem works the same as the Xenacy node, but the wording seems a bit odd. Rupturing is a debuff that applies whenever hit both bleeds and crits. It causes bleeds to do 25% more damage and expire 25% faster, stacking up to 3 times. This debuff applies to all bleeds, not just your own, which means you can use this to buff Summon Reaper. Summon Reaper is a minion skill that summons a single minion that does heavy bleeds and high physical damage. It also eats your other minions, preventing you from using specters. In the patch, they changed how chance to bleed support works and can now support minions. This fixes the skill's bleed chance problem. They also changed the quality on vulnerability, adding a chance to aggravate bleeds. Aggravate bleed is like the old ensnaring arrow. It causes bleeds to act as if the enemy was moving. This build has a lot of moving parts. First step is to proc rupturing. The small cluster drill of the siege makes all projectiles always bleed, but never pierce or chain. This won't matter because we're probably going to be using rain of arrows. Or just any bow skill with a high hit chance and high frequency. Crit chance and accuracy are problems with this, and they don't really get fixed either, we just sort of gamble with the low rates and spam out more arrows. The quiver, Ahana's bite, and call of the void ring lets us chill enemies and have them take increased damage. This is a pretty major scaler for the reaper. We also want to use Blink Arrow as our movement skill, ideally a T-Gem version of it, for with more duration. Since it is a minion, it can proc Feeding Frenzy, and the Reaper can eat it for a buff. That's everything the player does, but how about the minion? Reaper scales heavily off of gen level, so we put it in a gem level bow made with a minion damage essence. This does mean it scales very heavily with gem level gear. Replica Dragonflights, Empowers, you could get a plus minion gem helmet, but alternatively you would want to deed them to fix your mana. This build also has mana problems, that's another issue. And onto other issues, here's a build breaking one. Reaper AI. The Reaper has an active skill that lets you teleport it to a place to deal heavy bleed damage. And this will usually be your only way of dealing damage, because the AI is so bad that it won't hit anything else. This skill also has a cooldown, and you can see in the video what it's like trying to clear. It is painful. Now there is a smallish fix to this, there is a transfigured reaper gem summoned reaper of eviscerating. This one has no cooldown but a long cast time instead, and you can't trigger it. Making your bow a trigger weapon was traditionally the way you take it, so you can just automate the attacks. But take it from someone who made the trigger bow before, don't. It's not worth it. Also the new weapon chance might do the same thing for free, just see if that's a possibility. So I prefer eviscerating personally, but you would have to invest in cast speed somewhere. No matter what you do, the clear on this is horrible. I'm pretty sure this is made to be just a bossing build, but it is quite good at single target. 
As I was building this out, I was worried that this, could, that this could even be a viable league starter. Traditionally, it is very expensive wanting things like minion cluster stacking, minion damage recently abyss jewels, Amamona's gaze, and things like that. So I made a POB variant that has bare minimum budget gear, and one that has more stacked. And it was surprisingly okay, but okay at best. I want to emphasize again of how bad the clear is. Your damage will be fine, but the clear is just awful. Although one neat thing about Summon Reaper is that Ascendancy doesn't really matter. I picked a Necro for the most damage, and to be a good uh, pivot Ascendancy to something else. But traditionally, Jugs played Reaper a lot, just for having free defenses. I can also see Glad working, as well. Bleed pops do work from bleeds from minions, but it's unknown if they aggravate or War of Attrition work. You can't level as Reaper, just level as whatever the minion players are leveling as, they always have one build. Your fallback build is whatever gas he's playing. I'd call this the least viable out of the three. I'd only ever consider this if you very badly want to play Reaper, or you have to play Hipster Minion build. That's about all for this one. I'd like to stress again, only do these if you know what you're doing, and plan for failure. Personally, I'm leaning towards Charge Dash as my starter. It's a good way to test out everything, plus I just wanted to play Charge Dash again. I usually do build retrospectives, this is the first time doing build guesses. Usual starters do like aggressive testing and racing and things like that, but that's not how I play anything. I never redo builds. Ever. That's what I love about this game, the fact that I can never play the same build twice. So what I shared with you is my usual starter thought process of trying to pick up builds. I look through ideas and try to find something somewhat viable. And I have about a 50-50 success rate on these. So if you try out one of these, good luck, and don't get mad when it doesn't work. <laughs> That's what the Fallback Clan is for.